Hey everyone, I am Sara Chaudhry. I am a journalist, activist, actor, and writer, and I also happen to play Amy on Holly Hobby. I'm sitting down here today with Sarah Galinsky in honor of International Women's Day. Sarah is a showrunner and executive producer. She's technically my boss. So, hey Sarah, how are you? Hey Sarah, I'm good. So for everyone watching that doesn't know exactly what a showrunner does or what an executive producer does, do you mind just explaining a little bit about what your job entails? So a showrunner is literally the person who runs a TV show, um, but mostly from the creative side. So it's like the creative director of a TV show. So they're the one that's responsible for the writing department and coming up with the stories, both for an entire season and for an individual episode. And then they're also responsible for everything you see on screen. So they help cast the actors like you um, to play the characters. They help, they work with the wardrobe department to decide what the actors should wear. They work with the set department to decide what the room should look like or what the exterior should look like. So basically everything. I don't know how you do it all. <laughs> the truth is I have a lot of heroes working with me. So in honor of International Women's Day, um, I think it's really important to recognize all the women that have come before us and who have helped us get to where we are today um, and, and who have influenced us. So are you able to tell me about a woman who, who was a teacher or a mentor to you that made a difference in your life? Yeah, I think the woman who made the biggest uh, difference in my life was my mom. Uh, growing up, she always told me that I could do anything and she supported whatever path I chose. Uh, and working or getting a job um, in the TV industry is not easy, but I think with her encouragement, it was something that I knew that I could do. And so that I will be forever grateful for. Yeah, I definitely owe it all to my mom who who has always encouraged me to, to do whatever um, I, I wanted to do, to always follow my dreams, to not let the color of my skin, my gender, um, any societal barriers get in my way. Um, and she's definitely been my, my number one support. Do you consider yourself or have you considered yourself a mentor or teacher to, to other young women in the past? I think you try to be a mentor. I don't know if you ever think of yourself as a mentor. I'm aware of how much privilege I've had in life and how much opportunity that I've had. And so I'm pretty committed to making sure that other people, especially young women, have that same privilege and opportunity. I think the biggest thing I do is I just try to encourage anyone, no matter what age they are, no matter where they are in their uh, writing career or a TV career to try it because I'm, I'm kind of like if I could do it anyone can and I think that's a really important message that not everyone gets I got it from my mom I got it from a bunch of incredible teachers growing up and I, that's sort of the one thing that I think is so important to give to young people today you have to create a really safe environment so they feel comfortable being creative and being themselves and bringing all the awesome qualities they have um, to the forefront and I love what you said about responsibility I think that's exactly how I feel as well um, or it was like, I never really considered myself to, to be a role model, but now that I've kind of stepped into that role as a result of the things that I do, um, I've recognized the responsibility I have, especially for other, you know, women and girls and kids of color. I think the position that I'm in is something I don't take for granted ever. Um, I recognize the responsibility I have and work each day to make a difference through the things that I do. We're making characters that young people are watching. So I feel a lot of responsibility in terms of making those characters and you know representing a lot of different type of young people. So even on Holly Hobby, Holly, Amy, and Piper, who are all you know very different young women, I, I hope different girls watching them can look up and say, like, see themselves on the show. And I think you've done a really, really beautiful job of doing that. I mean, I get messages all the time on social media or younger kids coming up to me, um, you know, just out in public and stuff. And I'm saying like, hey, like, this is the first time I've seen someone like myself on screen. Um, you, it's either you look like me or your character likes the same things as me. Um, and just hearing those things just makes it so much more real. You don't really feel it in the moment. Like when we're on set and we're working, it just, it's fun and it's, it's enjoyable and it's work. Um, and, and we're just getting it done and, and we're, and we're enjoying every moment of it, but we're not really thinking about the impact necessarily as it's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then it's in those little moments when, when you get to talk to the people that actually watch your shows, that support you, the people that love your, your content and your, and your, and your projects. Um, when they kind of say those things, it just makes it so much more real and, and you kind of realize the impact that you're creating. What does it mean to you to see other women in, you know, there's higher up leadership positions on set? And, and do you think there are still gaps potentially in that represent, representation that we see on set? Or do you think we're working towards um, kind of better, better place? I think it's really important to have women uh, in boss positions on set and everywhere um, because they understand what it is to be a woman. As women, as like mothers, we have a bunch of responsibilities that are unique to us. And I think having more women around makes sets more friendly to all of those things. For sure. I think, you know, on our show, I saw women, you know, every single second I turned my head, there was a female crew member or a female writer, a female showrunner like yourself, a female director. But that certainly isn't the case on every set um, and other sets I've been on. It's not just women, it's women of color. It's men of color as well. Um, you know, and, and I haven't necessarily seen that. I know things are changing um, and, and there are more women of color and men of color in, in other um, kind of higher up positions, but I think there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, especially when it comes to just women in general in those kinds of roles and women on set um, in front and behind the camera. I think the happiest workplaces are where you feel safe and you feel understood. And I think to feel safe and understood, you need other people like you or other people that you can relate to. So that's why it's not enough just to have women um, on set. It, you know, it, it is about having women of color. It is about having men of color, um, you know, just so that everyone feels like they belong. I think that's really important. It's been proven time and time again that diverse environments um, create the best products. Yeah. Um, where you have- I've often been the only girl in a writer's room and then everyone looks at you to answer, <laughs> well, what would a girl do in this scenario? And I'm certainly not every girl and I can't speak for, for, for every girl. So that's a tough position to be in. So that's why I think it's important not to have one, but to have multiple people, to have different people, um, whether that's culturally, you know, socioeconomically, politically, all of that, uh, because that's how you make a great TV show. Having multiple people that may come from the same background doesn't mean you're getting two of the same. You're getting two separate experiences, two separate perspectives. I find it so weird when everyone, you know, if they're talking, about brown people or people of color like by the BIPOC like overall BIPOC community and people turn their head to me I'm like I I'm one perspective but I'm not everyone's perspective and I don't share everyone's experience and that's why it's important to have a lot of diversity behind the camera um, because we want to make sure our characters who are diverse are not token characters and that they're rich and interesting and unique um, and that being, you know, BIPOC is only part of who they are, right? And I think you need a lot of people to make that happen. You know, and that's the director, that's costumes, that sets, that's writing, that's everyone working together to, to, to make that character. And I felt that on, on, our, on our set, in front and behind the scenes, I could look into the writer's room and see someone that looked like me, that shared my experience, that could authentically speak to my character if a cultural perspective was needed. Mm -hmm. But there were also various women in the writer's room that could speak to the experience of being a woman from several different perspectives. I was really grateful kind of stepping onto set every day and realizing that there were a lot of strong um, women from a multitude of experiences and backgrounds um, that were coming together to create this beautiful show. Um, and I think having all those different diverse perspectives and experiences come together only made the show that much better and, and made a richer product. I have to say, I've learned a lot from people who have come ahead of me, but I maybe learned as much, if not more, from the people that I've hired and, you know, who are coming up. Um, you know, I've learned so much from you, Sara, and to the, uh, from the other young actors on the show. Um, the conversations we have about your character and about your life are really inspiring. 
Um, and that's the same for the young writers that I've worked with who are just like pushing me to be better <laughs> um, and who I want to be better <laughs> for. Um, so I think that's just as important. It's not just the people who are your like, your mentors aren't just the people who are your former bosses or teachers. They're also the people um, that you are mentoring yourself. Yeah, you're, and you're absolutely right. I mean, you are... in in my eyes, and I think many other people's eyes who have worked with you, a leader who, you know, is, you exemplify what it does mean to be a a good leader, Um, someone who listens to to the people that you're hiring, um, that listens to the people who are technically working for you. Like, I remember we were filming an episode um, about racism, Um, And that kind of topic of conversation came up and there were certain lines where I was like, hey, like maybe can can we switch it a little bit? This doesn't feel a thousand percent authentic to me. And you were like, yeah, a hundred percent. What do you need? What do you want to change it to? What feels more real? What, you know, what speaks to your experience more authentically and, and in a more truthful way? And the sad fact is, is that not every leader or boss is able to do that. We need more women like yourself um, in those kinds of roles who are who are willing to to listen. I think, you know, the the most important quality in a leader is the ability to listen and to learn and to take a step back at times um, and allow the running a TV show is hard work, and I just don't know why you wouldn't take all the help you could get. from all the smart people that you have hired. Um, I think it's really important. Is there any advice that you would give to young women who may be watching this conversation between ourselves or, or young girls that you interact with uh, when you're on set? What, what do you like to say to them? I think the one thing I like to do is to encourage them that they can do anything uh, if they work hard, which is basically the advice that my mother gave to me. Um, and it's advice that I believe. Uh, Another piece of advice I like to give is never be afraid to ask for opportunities. I think about several opportunities that wouldn't have come my way if I didn't ask or I didn't push. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think so many young women are afraid to take up space or afraid to voice our opinion. You have to do the work and you have to keep asking. And eventually if you keep asking and you're doing all the right things, then people will say yes. So I think that I think that's really important. By the time you get around to to asking everyone, you'll click with the people Absolutely. that align with you the most and that you are meant to work with. I think rejection, I mean, at least especially from an actor's perspective, as someone who's like auditioning all the time and I've been doing it for like I can't even imagine how you do it. I want to call actors after they've auditioned and like be like, you did really great. You didn't get it because, you know, whatever reason, because I just feel so bad. It's it's such hard work auditioning. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a full time job and it's emotionally taxing sometimes when, you know, you work really hard um, on roles that you, you Mm -hmm. believe that you can a thousand percent do but sometimes it has nothing to do with nothing to do with you talent it has nothing to do with ability it is seriously right place right time right look and I think every creative field like is like that writing and directing it's it's all of that um you just need to connect with the people connect with the material and it has to be the right time right place so I think another piece of advice which you said is don't get discouraged by no just keep trying Probably one of the reasons why you and I haven't given up is because we have such a wonderful support system. And I think that's really important as well is uh, to surround yourself by loving, supportive people who have your back when you get those no's and who will cheer when you get the yes. I think, like I always say, my family are my best friends, um, but it is the most truthful thing that's probably ever come out of my mouth ever. They have been my number one support system always and always will be. Um, And I feel really fortunate that I do have that. I know not everyone does, Um, but surrounding yourself by, if it's not your family, then friends, um, like like we've been talking about mentors, um, 
people who who align with you, who are there to support you unconditionally. Your focus, your dream that you're trying to pursue, but I think it's important that you have other things in your life that give you joy. Uh, I know you have many things in your life uh, that give you joy in addition to acting. For sure. I think being a, a young woman who's multifaceted is, you know, we're seeing it a lot more. It's so funny when we created the character of Amy, we got a lot of pushback because we wanted her to be a girl who's very interested in science and space and math. And then we also wanted her to be a cheerleader. And people were like, well, a smart girl wouldn't be a cheerleader. <laughs> and we're like, why not? <laughs> and so yeah we really we really pushed for that because it's very important to me like one girl can be many things and have many experiences and you can like science and be a cheerleader or you can be a singer songwriter and care about the environment um you know and I, I care about fashion and, and and care about math so it's like that's something that I think is a really important message is you can be more than one thing just that idea that another woman's success is not your failure. Um, it's not your loss. Um, and, you know, blowing out someone else's candle isn't going to make yours shine brighter. Um, and, and that's something that I think we've probably both learned along the way that, you know, giving back and allowing other women and other girls to have opportunities and helping them out along the way can only help you. Um, and can only help others. Well, thank you, Sarah, for such an amazing conversation. I absolutely loved talking to you today. I love talking to you too.